The Father Brown Stories by G.K. Chesterton. We present The Eye of Apollo, adapted by John Scotney, with Andrew Sachs as Father Brown. St. Francis Xavier's, this is Father Brown speaking. Oh, 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 uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, certainly, uh, yes, uh, uh, good, uh, goodbye, uh, yes, um, goodbye. Um, so that was the police system. Oh, oh Mother of God. Mm. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Father. But what would the police be wanting with us? Oh, Bigora, I should never have put the Holy Father's head on the counterfeit sovereign. You're mocking me, Father. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a gentleman called Inspector Bagshaw. I met him Bagshaw? last November. He wants to see me about a man called Flambeau. Flambeau? Hmm. A, a criminal. A criminal? Yes, I had hopes. I might, um, but, um... Yes, well, any, anyway, Inspector Bagshaw wants me to go to Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Such a long way, isn't oh, it? I must be why? back here this afternoon. I must... Twenty uh, minutes on the Tuppany Tube, Father. He can meet you at the station. The Tuppany Tube? The, tube. the electric underground train. Go from here on the CLR. Mm -hmm. The Central, that is, Father. Then change it to Oxford Circus for the new Bakerloo line. Tell me how to get out of this uh, underground station. Today. Yeah, I said just that there, Gov. Oh, thank you so we much. We know all about so it. Kind of we know all about it. Go and go stand news and stand it. What was it, Daisy, oh, Father? Oh, 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 dear, oh dear. Are oh, you all right now? It's a bad shot. Uh, no, I, I couldn't <laughs> see a thing. Uh, coming out from there, oh. you know, into this bright sunlight. Oh, I see. Um, uh, my glasses. I oh, yeah, think sometimes right. I need glasses to look for my glasses. There we are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ah, now, Jack, tell me about Flambeau. Yes. What new no devilry has he been up to? Well, that's the funny thing. He seems to have changed his ways. Opened up a straight business as a private detective. Oh. He's got an office in one of these new apartment blocks over here. Private? Yes. Yeah. Well, well. <laughs> Rejoice with me, I have found my sheep that was lost. Oh, yes, yes. He said he reckoned he could make more money out of detective work than out of crime. He wouldn't at Scotland Yard, I can tell you that. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, we too know something of poverty. Oh, yes, indeed. Frankly, sir, I do value your opinion about whether Flambeau is pulling the wool over our eyes. Oh. He did particular ask to see you, and his office isn't far from here, so if you wouldn't mind... This is it. They haven't even finished working on it yet. It's the big tall one with, with the sign. You, you can see it, can you? Oh, the great gold eye. Yes, yes, yes even I can see that. Okay. <laughs> Monsieur Flambeau now seems to be taking as much trouble to advertise himself as he once took to conceal himself. Oh, no, 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 that's not Flambeau's office. He's got the office underneath. That's one of the new religions. Fellow oh. calling himself Calon. It can't be his real name. He calls himself the new priest of uh, Aten or something. Ah, hmm? yeah. R10, the Egyptian sun god. Ah, you can't see it. It sounded fishy to us. I'm willing to bet it's something to do with old Flombo, but we can't prove any connection. Oh, he must look out this, scale on The sun gods were always the cruelest. Oh, yeah, yeah. What does that monstrous eye mean? Well, as I understand it, Father, according to our report, they've, they've got this theory. A man can endure anything if he thinks the right way. Their two big symbols are the sun and the open eye. They reckon if a man is really healthy, he can stare at the sun. Oh, a really healthy man wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm. I'm with you there, sir. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'll wait for you in the pub over there. Uh, we can yes. uh, we can compare notes afterwards. Oh, eh? Yes, right, yes, fine. Uh, mind the revolving door. Uh, oh. Yes. Uh, oh. Oh, that's better. Yes. Ah, you okay, Reverend? Oh, yes, sir, thank you so yeah. much. Uh, one small thing, sir. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh, I'm the supervising engineer for the elevator construction. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, sorry. Um, I build the lift. Oh. I wanted to warn you. What well, is something wrong with them? Sir, in our opinion, the quietest super silent elevator system is the best in the world. The quietest system is 53% quieter than any other. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Is it uh, electric? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, I thought so. 
Anyway, although the elevators are working, I must ask you to wait for the attendant. Of course. You see, the safety catch on the outer doors isn't yet working to maximum efficiency. Mr. Wilson, no lift boy again, I see. Oh, oh no. Well, uh, I will be no more dependent on boys than on men. I am quite capable of working the thing myself. Uh, and you? You going to wait all day, or will you come with me? I, I was told by... Oh, no, that's all right, Reverend. Miss Stacy can handle the elevators just fine. Oh. Fine and dandy. Well then, thank you so much. Most kind of you. Now, nine. Um, here. And you? Oh, I, I, I don't know if you'd know. It's Monsieur Flambeau. Ah, oh, the tenth, just above mine. Oh, there are you. only three fours occupied. Um, ten. <coughs> and. Wow. Oh, it certainly is very fast. Mm. Mm. Eight. Nine. Good. <coughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the stupid gym crack company. What do you mean? Quiet as super silent lifts. This door is always getting stuck. Oh, Duck. well, may I... Why couldn't they have gone to one of the big lift firms? Well, no, let me help, huh? There. Uh, 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 now, don't tell me. I'm uh, beginning to get the hang of these things. I shut this door. Yes. Yeah, and now this one. Uh, oh, shuts easier than it opens. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> Shouldn't you be inside it? No. Don't you want the next floor up? I'll call the lift back. Oh, no, no, no. Um, thank you. Um, stairs, if there are stairs. I'd rather, um, I'm used to stairs. They're not electrical. Another helpless man. Uh, come and meet my sister, Joan. Oh. We have a typewriting agency, just the two of us. Oh, Joan! Did you move that waste paper bucket? Oh, I'm sorry, Pauline. I've, I've, I've told you before, everything in this office is carefully placed in its most efficient position. Please don't move anything. Efficiency and light, those are our watchwords. Electric light? Oh, we do have electric light, of course, but, but no, I meant the one true light of heaven. Oh. Uh, the stairs are just here. My dear Father Brown! <laughs> oh, you startled me. You know, old ways die hard. I didn't hear the lift. Ah, oh, well, I'm sorry. I, I had a contretemps with the lift. I came through the ladies' electrical typewriting bureau. I do not think there is yet such a device as an electrical typewriting machine. But when one is invented, assure yourself, the Mrs. Stacy would be the first to have a model. But please, please, uh, do sit. Uh, oh, uh, let you. me take your umbrella. Oh, thank you. That is uh, kind. Uh, ah, um, Miss, um, Miss Pauline seems a, a very strong-willed lady. Oh, yes, she is. She is. She has most strict principles, not just the scientific progress, but also the health of the body. Oh? Would you like some coffee? Real French coffee? Oh, yes, yes, please. The, uh, the health of the body. Yes. You saw her sister, Joan? Yes. Uh, she is very short-sighted. Uh, hereditary disease, I believe. Their poor father died completely blind. And, uh, well, uh, let me see now. The coffee grinder. There's the coffee grinder. The coffee grinder. Ah, uh, voila, voila, voila. Yes, so um, I was there last week. I wanted some typewriting. The brave Pauline, she will not allow Joan to wear spectacles. She catches her wearing them, she tears them from her nose and stamps on them. <laughs> Miss Pauline, I said, you believe in all this scientific improvement. Why cannot science help in this way too? I remember her words. True scientific invention is the force of man and woman too, she said. But these nasty props and potions the doctors sell, they are the marks of our slavery. We must train ourselves not to need them. We must learn to stare unblinking in the sun. Oh, very curious. I'm afraid I can't stare unblinking at anything. But if, um, if Miss uh, Joan has such poor eyesight, how can she see the little letters on, on, the, on the typewriting machine? She is a touch typewriter. Uh, uh, type, type. Uh, these professional typewriters, uh, they don't need to look at the letters. They know the keyboard by heart. And how, you ask, does she read the material she has to typewrite? Answer, she does not. <laughs> Another scientific miracle. Now, you see this? 
to all their clients like me, they supply a phonograph. We dictate what we have to say here, mm -hmm. and into the mouth of the machine, yes. deliver the wax cylinders, and allez up, they are typewritten. Well, it all sounds very wonderful. One has to admire their enterprise. It must be, it must be difficult to make ends meet. Pardon? To make, uh, uh, to, make, uh, to make a living. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, no, there, there, there is no difficulty there. Uh, Miss Pauline, she is from one of your county families. Eh? She inherited a fortune. It is wholly to her credit that she prefers to work. I see. Monsieur Flambeau, I must ask you very directly. Is Miss Stacy's fortune in any way connected with your setting up office immediately above her bureau? Connected? How do you mean? Ah, I see. You think that I am... I'm an... asking you if this office is merely a front. Isn't that the word? Uh, a coffee, hmm? Father Brown, I will answer you equally directly. No, it is not. Yeah. Thank you. As to whether I would be tempted to go back to a life of crime, uh, that is more difficult. Frankly, I, I do not know. You said things to me when we last met which touched me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am human. I am frail. <laughs> yes, yes, for all my size and strength. For many years, the life of the criminal is the only life I know. Now I, I try to change. Pray for me. I do. Mr. Flambeau, I have a confession to make. Inspector Bagshaw asked me to come and see you to, um, to try you. He's waiting downstairs in a public house opposite. Uh, he, he is? Mm -hmm. Bagshaw? Ah, mm -hmm. oh, good. We shall have lunch together. I must warn him against this Kalon who has the apartment above mine. Oh, the, uh, the, the sun priest. Uh, so he says. I tell you, Father, me, I know the criminal man. <laughs> I ought to. I've got one myself. <laughs> that man, he is the one to watch regarding the fortune of our Miss Stacy. Oh, uh, uh, oh uh, just uh, half a bit of me, Monsieur Flambeau. Okay, right. Hey, 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 what's going on over there? Oh, on the balcony there. Oh, that is your son priest. He comes out at noon every day to stare at the sun and chant some nonsense. Oh. See there, two floors below, yes. there is Miss Bully. She comes out of her office onto her balcony five minutes before Kaelin appears. She just stares. Good look. And in a minute or two, she'll go in and reappear with him on his balcony. Each day the same. It's ridiculous. Really? <laughs> I'll go and get the drinks. Oh, there's Joan Stacy. Who? Oh, that lady over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's not the sort of woman I'd expect to see alone in a public house. Oh, perhaps she's got an assignation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, she's been here almost as long as I have. She, she's a very fine-looking woman. Well, shall I introduce you? Oh, oh really? Yes, oh. Please. <laughs> well, good afternoon, Miss Stacy. Oh, good afternoon, Father. Uh, I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance, madam. Very pleased. I beg your pardon. Uh, oh, this um, is Inspector Bagshaw. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? <laughs> Here are you, here are you, the, the drinks. Ah, yeah, uh, yes. so ah hello, Miss Stacy. Ah, now, there, look. Hmm? Pauline's gone in from her balcony. In a moment, you'll see her up with Kayla. Uh, can I get you a drink, Miss Stacy? Oh, no, that's... What, what was that? D didn't you hear anything? Yeah, yes, I did, yes. I did, yes. Look, look over there. Yeah. Is something happening over there? Oh, come on! Oh, yes, yes quick, uh, excuse me, pardon. Yes, yes, yes. I'm a police officer now, then what happened? I warned you. I told her the lift wasn't safe. Yes, well, never mind that now. Go and get a doctor, though. I'm, I'm afraid it's too late. How can Pauline have stepped into thin air, into an empty lift shaft? Or was she pushed? Well, if she was, it would not have been Keller who pushed her. He's still chanting away. Excuse no, me. No, no, Miss Stacy. Miss Joan, don't come any closer. It's your sister. I'm afraid she... Yes. I warned her. I warned her about the lift. I warned her of many things. She would not listen. There is something very peculiar here. I'm going to see Kaylin. Uh, go with him, will you, Father Brown? Just, just in case. Thank you very much, sir. Right, I went back to you, sir. Oh, hello. 
I don't think those stairs are meant for climbing. Oh, well, here we are, the Stacy's office. Uh, aren't oh. you coming up to Kalen's floor? It's another oh. proof floor, sir. No, no, I, I think we may find this floor more interesting. Uh, you notice the open gate to the lift chart? Yes, yes. yes. And, uh, your height. Right. Look, look here in the oh. waste paper bucket. Blood, see, blood. Blood? No, no red ink, Would you? and green ink, and blue ink, incredible. and black ink. Well, that's funny. It wasn't here before. You see, this bin, uh, Miss Pauline, she, she knocked it over. I'm sure, I'm sure I'd have noticed the ink. Do I know? Listen, there comes the lift. Oh, yes. <sighs> Kaelan. What are you doing here? Ah. Oh. Where is Pauline? My dear. Why didn't she come up to join me? Uh, Pauline, uh, Miss Pauline Stacy, is dead. She fell down the empty lift shaft. <gasps> dead? Pauline is dead? Maybe she's uh, dizzy. Oh, I must have died. Of course, of course, yes. Yeah. Oh, damn, damn Trixie lifts. Oh, that woman. That woman who is dead was my love and my bride. Come on, sir. She, she was your wife? No. No, not after the manner of your tin chapels, <laughs> what the world calls lawful matrimony, but after a pure, sterner law, higher than anything you can understand. Allow me to try. Would you learn from me? Perhaps I might learn something. You see, we are taught that principles and motives are what we should judge a man on. If, uh, say, a man has bad principles, it is, uh, well, it is his fault if he commits a crime. You would convict men of crime. I would convict them of innocence. You would convince them of sin. I would convince them of virtue. All oh, your church is but a black police. <laughs> A black police, I ask you. The man is a charlatan. Oh, about the police? Oh, oh, them stairs. Oh, don't talk to me about the police. Now I know what they mean when they say when you want one, you can't find one. Blow my whistle for five minutes, I was, before any of the uniform branch turned up. Oh, um, this is the, uh, deceased sister, Miss Joan Stacy. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, of course you both know her. <laughs> <laughs> um, you must be Kalon. Right, I've, I've got my breath back. We might as well get started. I don't mind telling you, I can't put my finger on it, but something stinks here. It looks like an accident, could even be suicide, but I smell murder. Now, Mr. Kalon, what were you doing just before the, uh, well, before Miss Stacy fell? Going into Stacy's office with a document for Pauline to sign. Then I went upstairs to commence my prayer. Up? Stairs? Just for the record, what was the document you were taking to be signed? It was Miss Pauline Stacy's will. She'd asked me to check it before she signed. Pauline did love me. And, and this very morning before she died, she wrote on that table a will leaving me and my church half a million pounds. Oh, see for yourself. The will is on the table over there. I give and bequeath to charter... Uh, uh, my knowledge of English law may be limited, but how is this valid? It is not signed. <gasps> not signed? Oh. What? What? What monkey tricks you have been up to, Joan? How dare you? See here, gentlemen. Here's your death explained. The poor girl is writing her will in my favor. Her cursed sister here comes in, struggles for the pen, drags her to the shaft, and throws her down before she can finish. Oh, <coughs> Mr. Kalon, Miss Stacy here has the same alibi as the other chief suspect. I myself was only a few yards from her when the murder occurred. Uh, and uh, who is the other chief suspect? You are, Flombo. Mm -hmm. And I? Well, yes, you, you do have a motive. When I am called to dock, many hundred people will go into the witness box and testify that I was standing on my balcony. Two floors above Pauline's office when she fell to her death. Could I be in two places at once? Oh, I... oh well, I... 
Can't I know? Um, Father Brown. So the little inquisitor defers to the grand inquisitor. But I still say I am without sin. Oh, is anyone without sin? There have, I feel, been sins committed here, sins of omission and sins of commission. But I doubt whether they could lead to a conviction in a court of law. I confess I am defeated. Defeated? You are defeated? Yes, I feel I am. Then let me tell you what I think of. Oh, yes, please do, I be. <laughs> I solemnly believe that in some ecstasy of noble thought, Pauline attempted a miracle. Yes. It is well known to students of the higher truths that certain adepts and illuminati have attained the power of levitation, of being able to float in empty air. Perhaps Pauline believed she had achieved such a level. Perhaps in her eyes. In her eyes. In her eyes, yes, that's it. But I see you do not understand. Oh, but I think I do. What do you mean, Father? Monsieur Flambeau, you told me that you could understand how a criminal behaves because you yourself were a criminal. Mm -hmm. I am very short-sighted. I know how short-sighted people behave. Miss Joan is very short-sighted. Her father died blind. The disease is hereditary. Miss Pauline also inherited it, though she refused to admit it. Uh, two things I recognized. In the lift, she could not read the numbers on the floor indicator. She had to count the floors as we passed. And she did not see the waste paper bin she knocked over. I'm, I'm always doing things like that. Oh. Without my spectacles, I'm blind. But Miss Pauline refused to wear spectacles. She made her eyes worse by straining them and staring into the sun. And coming in from the sun, she could not see. There was no lift in the shaft. Yes. So, so it, it was an accident after all. But tell me, Kalon, why, when we saw you take a lift to descend two floors, from your office to Miss Stacy's, why did you choose, as you told us, to walk up the same two floors? Why didn't you take the lift? What do you mean? Huh? What are you getting at? And might I suggest, you're a strong man, Mr. Kalen. The lift gate on Pauline's floor was faulty. I myself saw she could not open it unaided. And no doubt, in a generous spirit, you were in the habit of leaving the gate open with the lift in position so that she could enter it and ascend to join you on your balcony? Yeah. What if I was? Well, now, now suppose, uh, I'm only supposing, of course, uh, suppose today, shall we say, believing that Miss Pauline Stacy had signed a will in your favor, you were tempted. Tempted? The word means nothing. Uh, very well. You chose, when you had walked up the two floors to your office, you chose to press the little electric button to summon the lift to your floor. Would that not mean that at Pauline Stacy's floor the door would remain open? And that instead of finding the lift she expected and assuming, as I suggested, uh, that she could not see, she would step confidently into the empty shaft because you had called the lift to your own floor? That's it. There. I have him, Inspector. Uh, let right, me go. Oh, right, no, right, right, no, 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 Mr. Kale, no, no, I charge no, you with no, a no, willful no, no, murder. No, no, I was only conjecturing. And I'm sure there can be no charge against this man in law. As he said, there were hundreds of witnesses to the fact he was praying to his God when Pauline died. No, let him go, Monsieur Flandre, please, please. <laughs> Who are you, you cursed black spy to weave a spider's web round me? I... I will leave now, and none of you can stop me! No, no, no! No, 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 no Monsieur Flamber, let him pass. <sighs> yes, let Cain pass, for he belongs to God. Inspector? Oh, uh, Miss Joan, I, I, I do apologize. I'm afraid in all the excitement I'd rather forgotten about you. Am I free to go too? This has... Uh... All been something of a, a shock. Oh, well, well, of course, Miss Stacy. Uh, Miss Joan, if, if there's anything I, I can do. Uh, no, uh, thank you, Inspector. Oh. Father Brown, Monsieur Flambeau. Mademoiselle. So, I am the only suspect remaining, Inspector. Oh, uh, I didn't really suspect you, Flambeau. Nor me 
Miss Joan. Ah, but, Inspector, she is not wholly without guilt. Hmm? Then what was our crime, Father? Well, one was to guess that her sister was in danger and to come down to the public house to disassociate herself from that danger. The other was um, more deceit, really, and something of a gamble. Knowing her sister intended signing the will, she emptied all the fountain pens into the waste paper bin here, uh, hoping her almost blind sister would not see she had not made a mark. Yes, yeah. It was a gamble. Kalon could easily have checked, but he was preoccupied with his own evil thoughts. The gamble paid off. Hence, her relief when she knew there was no signature. Let me see. Fifteen minutes since the murder by my watch. Is that a record for a solution, Inspector? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I knew Kalon had done it before we came into the front door. Mm -hmm. Oh! How in the name of... <laughs> Human nature. In the middle of Kalon's prayers, there was a crash, a scream, the hullabaloo of the crowd, and a policeman blowing his whistle for five minutes. But Kalon continued unperturbed. He did not start or even look down. He clearly expected something of the kind. In The Eye of Apollo by G.K. Chesterton, the part of Father Brown was played by Andrew Sachs. Flambeau, Olivier Pierre. Bagshaw, Bill Wallace. Kalen, Bruce Bower. Pauline Stacy, Nerissa Knights. Joan Stacy, Lisa Flanagan. Wilson, Garrick Hagen. Sister, Melinda Walker. News vendor, Robin Summers. The Eye of Apollo was adapted by John Scotney and directed in Bristol by Alec Reed. <laughs>